Welcome Ross developers to this Q&A video series. In this video I'm going to try to answer the following question. How to generate large number of random particles which are continually moving into one direction for collision detection? So we are going to try to answer this question doing a demonstration. Okay? Before we start, remember that if you want to learn ROS, the Construct YouTube channel is your channel. You can learn about navigation, manipulation, uh, AI, autonomous cars, anything related to ROS, you can find it here. So please check it out. And if you have any doubt about topics that we're talking about that I don't go in deeper, you can go to Robot Ignite Academy where you can learn about all these topics in a step-by-step -step fashion without any installation required. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing is that I've launched ROS Development Studio, which is an online ROS development platform, and I've created a project. And I have already done here, so I'm going to explain step-by-step -step how this was done and and explain the more dif difficult topics. So the first thing is that I created a project, uh, a package here, which is called Particle Shooter. Um, all the code that I create here, you'll have it in a Git, and also I'll post in the description below the Rosject, so you can just click it and you'll have it, plug and play. Yeah. So let's see this in action. So if we go here and we launch the main one, once it's done you can see that it's a testing system so you have three models, three walls basically, which simulate the, the censoring um, element for collisions in each of the three directions, so X, Y and Z. Yeah? And then you have a blue ball, what, look, what looks like a blue ball. So if we hit play, it will automatically start shooting balls, in this case, to the Y panel, in the Y axis, but we can change this. But basically we have this, and we want to learn how to do this. Yeah? So let's, let's get started. So first things first, I created a, uh, a package, I created just going to opening a web shell and going to the your workspace that you have local in your local computer, normally it's Catkin workspace. In this case, in ROS Development Studio, you have three workspace for each of the things that you need. In this case, things that are related to simulations, you have to put them here. And you just can create create package, the name of the package, and the dependencies. Which are the dependencies for this package? Well, this package is really low in dependencies. It does need Gazebo ROS and ROS CPP. And that's it. Yeah. You also have to do the export of the models path to be able to load anywhere the models that you have in this folder models we have two models the particle and the testing surface which is this red surface here yeah okay and then we have also to tell it where to find the libraries because we are going to create a world plugin for gazebo so let's have a look at that um, let me go here, C++. This is the magic, where the magic happens, and basically it's the particle shooter plugin, which if we go down, you see that it's a world plugin. Yeah. This means that what we are going to do is we're going to launch a launch file, in this case main launch, and this is basically the empty world launch for, for Gazebo ROS, that's using the world, this particle shooter world. 
So let's have a look at this particle shooter world. This world has a ground plane and some particles. In this case, as many as you want. In this case, we have 12 to don't, so that you can execute this anywhere with any kind of computer. But you will see like a heavier version. And then we have this st testing surfaces in the different orientations. And that's quite it. So now we have, yeah, we have this, which is the atmosphere and the physics and then the plugin. So this is the one that makes the magic happen. And here we set some values. In this case, we set up the reset frequency, the X axis force, Y and Z. So we determine in which direction is the force applied. And then the origin, so the fountain where all the particles um, start always. In this case is in the origin plus in Z 0 0.5 meters. And then random range is the range that we change the X, Y um, values x y and z values so we change it in a way that we can move we have some fluctuations in in the particles as you can see here so they don't appear all of them in the same line they appear totally different yeah let's stop it okay so let's have a look so we have to see how this is compiled. This is compiled through the CMake list. As you can see, there not there's not much to be said. Just add definitions for C++11 because remember that this solution is for melodic. Um, I stress this because uh, some functions that we use, uh, they weren't like this in uh, in previous versions of Gazebo and ROS, so have have a look at that, especially for Gazebo. ROS is not related directly related, but if you have Melodic, you'll have a certain version of Gazebo. Yeah, so bear that in mind. In this case, we are working with Gazebo nine, so bear that in mind. Then we put the, the dependencies, we put the includes. This is standard so nothing special and here we just add the executable we compile it so we say hey particle shooter plugin c++ we want to generate this particle shooter plugin uh, binary and this and then we link all the libraries to this binary yeah which are the catkin libraries and the gazebo libraries and that's it so let's have a look at the code so we start here uh, oh yeah. yeah, so we have the load function which loads all the parameters that we stated here in the world so all these parameters are loaded in the load method this is just to know that ROS is initialized for further if you, you want to use topics if you want to use anything related to ROS this is really important then we load world, the SDF, we load the different values, the reset, the axis, and so on. And then we start the second sub wait, we just start. We wait for a few seconds, and then we start this with the time. This will be used to, to make this effect as you can see, not all the, the, the particles go at once, but they go sequentially. This is obtained by this frequency. Yeah, This is the frequency in which we uh, issue commands for each of the particles in order. So we use this for um, having the, the time, counting the time. 
and then we start the update on update that this is the most important method here then we get the particle list so it basically looks into the world and see how many particle models we have and we make a list yeah and this one just prints it we make a reset just in case we want to reset the simulation so that we don't have problems with the time and then we go to the on update which essentially what it does is if I'm resetting we, I don't do anything if it's not resetting then we check basically if the time has passed and we have to execute something based on that frequency so this is all related to that and then we update the particles and we increment this so as you can see we use this model to update index now to count to execute orders to this uh, particles in order so first the zero then the one two three and then when we get to the to the end of the particles then we reset it again and we start again from the first particle yeah that way we get this effect as if we were launching all the balls sequentially yeah that we do basically so update particles the update particles is we give it an index and if the index is if we access this list that was generated and has the same name as the model name then we get inside basically what we're doing here is okay now is the turn for um, particle I don't know particle sphere 3 okay when it's time for the 3 then it only moves the 3 yeah and then we move the particle which means reset its position to the origin position and then we set a force yeah that basically shoots it to the direction that we want yeah let's have a look at move particle the move particle uh, what it does is it gets this model and sets it the sets it its pose in the world based on a ran so this random values which are the origin plus or minus the random range so basically we do our, we generate random numbers inside those ranges and that's it we put it there and then we execute the set force which is the one of the trickiest ones just because the, they change the bit how these things are done so and essentially you give it a model and then it applies a force to this model which uh, in gazebo you can't apply a, a force directly to a model because a model is made of many links and so you have to specify which link are you in this case because this model has only one link let's have a look so the particle sphere just has one link which is named link so that's why here we say the model gets the link which name is link and we set the force bear in mind we're using ignition math and not math or whatever that was used in previous versions and then we set the the vector force and that's it once it's done it shoots the particle and that's quite it actually because we have this function which is random float which generates a, a random float and then here we initialize all the variables that we use and that's it yeah so let's have a look at another version so the heavy one the heavy one has a hundred particles inside so what happens let's have a look okay as you can see it printed uh, the list of the models of the sphere particles that we got so model ID 99 hmm? and 
as you can see here in this case they start like this and we just have one we press play and there we go so as you can see it's heavier and we have loads of particles floating around but they are crashing into this why do they float well because in the and in the question it states that we want without effect of gravity so what we did is we stated in the model you might have seen it gravity zero one means it has gravity it gets affected by gravity and zero means it doesn't so that's why they're floating around like crazy yeah this depends of course on uh, on your computer how powerful it can it, it can be and can do this faster or slower or in ROS DS if you have um, a basic subscription subscription or you have a very powerful one in my case I'm using a simple one so this means it's it's getting heavier and heavier yeah but it's doing the work so and as you can see here it's heavier because we have real-time 29 seconds while the simu simulated time it's 15 seconds so it's r going really slow like a factor of 0 0.5 yeah well there you go so that's it so if you have any questions or any suggestions please leave it in the comments and thank you for watching please consider subscribing and give a like if you did if you did like it and hope to see you in the next video hasta la próxima